Welcome back, everybody. Day four of the Hi-Fi Summit continues with Jason from Canto Audio. What is going on? What's up? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah favorite. Favorite. What's up? It's good to see you guys. Uh, as for what is going on, I'm in the um, the Canto sound room. If you can see a little bit of sound dampening, we've got a bass trap right here. Nice. Uh, so, yeah, back, back at the... Uh, I mostly work from home, but it's kind of nice to be back here occasionally. I like it, man yeah nice we're waiting for people to trickle in here because we just started the stream and we're streaming to multiple youtube channels and multiple facebook channels so gotcha uh, are you streaming to daily hi-fi and hi-fi summit its own yes yeah oh, okay mm -hmm. cool i think i've been watching it uh on the hi-fi summit YouTube yeah channel. and so that's why we're trying to bring up all of the the messages that come up because they might be coming from different sources could yeah. be from facebook one you know so yeah. we try to bring up as many of these as possible here. Yeah. Thanks. So. Boom. Yeah, some some of them even say Facebook user. So it's real. <laughs> yeah, generic. yeah. They haven't <laughs> signed in. Yeah. It's just Facebook user. Oh, we got cruising yeah. RSX. That yeah. Cruising RSX. I just want to give you props. I've seen you through it like the whole summit commenting. You are <laughs> hardcore dedicated. You and Kanga Empire. Uh, yeah. who else? Oh man, there's so many people. Steve here. is always Cro in here. Croson's in here. Yeah. Lots of folks, man. Yeah, we got Jason our, was super our... knowledgeable last time. Yeah. I might be knowledgeable this time too. Hey. Might is hey. the key word in that sentence. Just, <laughs> just kidding, kidding, kidding. <laughs> I keyed, I keyed. I feel like my presentation this time is gonna be a little bit looser. Last time it was Good. like a legit like seminar like speech. Like I was like, you know, but I think we'll yeah, I think I'll be a little bit yeah, a little bit more chatty Laid with back. you guys and nice. Yeah. Why not? Let's do right. it. We're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna have some fun no matter what, Jason. So, yeah. what do you want to talk about today? My wife made wanna, me a cocktail, yeah. so I'm good. It looks like water, <laughs> but it's not. I swear. Oh, really? You okay. have you don't even know what I have in here. <laughs> it's water. Uh -oh. you, yeah, you know what I have in here. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. He's got whiskey. <laughs> like I ran a marathon, but thing. <laughs> sure. Uh oh yeah, I want to talk about I want to talk about speaker stands. Let's do it, man. Uh, yeah, Canto makes speaker stands. And hopefully, hopefully he's like, that's the talks over. <laughs> that's it, guys. Go to our store, Speaker buy them. Stand. We got them. We sell little ones and big ones. And they're all. Hey, uh, check this out, Jason. What's up? You see that right there? Oh, SP 26 or 32 up there. I think this is the taller one. 32. 32. Nice. Yeah. So you see, yeah. he's representing, man. What you don't know is Joe swaps out his props. Depends on what guess is on the <laughs> on the, the seminar. He busts out the bows when bows he come. He does, out. dude. Yeah, that's funny. These are great stands. Um, thank you. Yeah, Andrew Robinson uses it uh, for his rears uh, and on on in all his videos. And every single time I watch a video, I just like I that's see mine. You. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. I see you, speaker stand. What else yeah. is going on here? Uh, see, I in would, meantime, I would use them do... in my videos too if you sent me some, but no there one you go. sent me <laughs> any. <laughs> just <Sure>. saying. <laughs> the Hi Fi Summit is just uh, made for us to harass all the companies to tell That's them to send us just a send preview. It. Send That's it. it. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I still want to hear some of them Canto Tooks, man. Everybody's been bragging about them. I've yet to hear them. The, you haven't heard the Tux yet? No, oh, okay. no. Oh, all right. I can't yeah, even yeah. pronounce them right. Well, I call them the Tux. The Tux? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not so like... So if you had two of them, would it be the Tux? <laughs> tuk? <laughs> Have a Tux and a Tux. A Tux, isn't that like a, another word for a beanie? Like a... Um, yeah, that's what we call it up in up in the up in the yeah, north here in Canada. Yeah, the two. So yeah. you weren't even like far off. Like I'm going okay, to see. I was, all right, I was close. I'm trying to be... Yeah. Um, What is the term? Um, diverse? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but culturally aware. That's what I'm trying to be. <laughs> I feel like you. Culturally relevant. That's what I'm yeah, trying there to you do. Go. Show some love to the neighbors up north. Yeah, man. I got uh, some yeah. I got some friends. I got some YouTube friends up in Canada. And I got some subscribers in Canada. Good folks up there. Yeah, man. Lots of tech companies. A lot of tech like yeah. uh like Dave Lee is up in Canada. PSB is like, up there, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Landbrook. Yeah. yeah. A lot There's of great companies center, up there. Then. That's what I like about yeah. Jason is last time he's not afraid to mention that other companies actually exist. Absolutely. And so oh, I respect yeah. that. That's cool. About you. But, That's, but yeah. he won't but tell we're you they're about better Canto right now, but, right? Yeah. We are talking about Canto. Yeah. I'm not going to talk too much about the competitor stuff in my <laughs> seminar today. But cool, yeah. Man. Um, uh, so, question for you guys how well, how well do you know Canto and their products? Just generally. Is it a quiz? 
This is a quiz time for you guys. Um, Let's do us. Do it. I don't. Howard again, speaker, I don't. Why you four? Why you six? Took it's the U oh, four. Sorry, Tuck is the U. Okay. It's the U. See, See I didn't even pronounce Chana that just right. got an eighty. Yeah. Keep going, Chana. It'll go down. That's right. What else? That's what up. else do we make? What else? Do you guys, you guys throw throw some more. Canto. Uh, you, you make, make speaker the... stands. I know that. <laughs> speaker stands. I just found that out today. Uh, okay, so don't be looking going, at their website, Joe. Come on, he's he's like <laughs> seriously going to Google. What the heck? Subway. So, um, yeah, the reason I'm the reason I'm asking you guys is because, um, okay, so I'm representing Canto Audio, but mm -hmm. um, we are we have two divisions. We don't just make speakers and mm. speaker accessories. Canto also makes TV stands. So okay. I'm not sure if like how many people. Oh, buddy, that's heavy. Oh, there we go. Oh. I'm not sure uh, how familiar all y'all are, but we we make we make speaker stands. Uh, sorry, we make we make TV mounts, and okay. um, that's actually a huge part of our business. Um, and I'm not here to talk about TV mounts. I'm here to talk about speaker stands. Um, but the reason I bring it up is because. Um, we specialize in in metal products like that mm. is for for years before we even made audio gotcha. we were doing tv stands so we kind of feel like we have a little mm. bit of a a leg up on some of our competitors because we mm. actually are almost at the at the core of our business we are a steel product manufacturer um almost first and foremost audio is something that we we started developing after and uh you know we're, we're passionate about audio but you know a lot of our business comes from tv mounts steel products mm, okay so that passion and that expertise trickles into our audio products uh our audio our audio uh, our speaker stands our floor standing speaker stands desk mount uh speaker stands so um we'll talk a little bit about the products later i'm, I'm gonna like unbox we'll like look at the cool features that we have um but the thing that i wanted to kind of talk about first is uh some some theory because really my job here today is um, i want to make everyone think about speaker stands as an integral part of the speaker buying uh or speaker upgrade uh process mm. um you know I, I think a lot of people that you know you're like thinking about buying speakers and you're really like, I want to spend this much money and I want to get this much speaker. And I think sometimes people kind of forget that speaker stands are, I mean, in my opinion, they're an integral part of the process. You kind of have to think about that as well. Um, so I don't know about you guys. Are you guys, do you guys consider yourself frugal? Any of you guys? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm known for the I'm youth frugal. man deal. So I'm always looking for a good deal. I'm, gotcha. I'm, I'm okay. I don't know about this guy. Chana, no way. <laughs> I mean, like, Chana it, dropped I, like six thousand dollars on DJ setup last week. It, like, no big deal. It, it, it all depends, and that I did that in February. But that, 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 it all depends. I know these guys are always like, "Man, you spend a lot of money. At, there's just all this cool musical equipment like I, I want to get." And um, yeah, you know, some I have this. So so we call that. Um, I'm also um, I'm on a forum um, for like synthesizers and other recording equipment. It's called Gear Sluts. Um, yeah, I've been there before. You've been there before, yeah. Well, so, I do. You know. I do like I do desktop. I mean, I do like bedroom production, and I used to oh, okay. do, well, like DJ like weddings and stuff too. Ooh. So like I'm pretty I'm pretty well versed in that world as well. So yeah, Gear yeah. Sluts is a very active, very awesome, awesome forum. No, totally. And like, you know, they always use the the phrase gas, which stands for gear acquisition syndrome. And I definitely got that. Like you got lots sure. of gas. John. I got tons lots of, gas. of gas. You have no you're, idea. You're the gassiest person I've ever met, man. I'm the gas king, you know. <laughs> so yeah, if if you if you whatever the price of okay. your stands are right now, if you made one that was, you know, maybe twice, twice as expensive, but it had like one extra feature, Chano would definitely go for that one. Yeah. It'll it'll get on my radar. I'm like, whoa, what's better? Yeah, <laughs> you guys got this one for fifty bucks. What's the hundred dollar level look like? You know, <laughs> <It's> always <laughs> for the that best money. Get you. Yeah. Um. Anyway, I mean, the reason I bring it up is like I'm a very frugal person, and like, um, <clears throat> sometimes like I want something, like I'll really like I'll desire a product, and I will not get it. I'll end up 
you know, finding something else that, you know, gets me like 80% there uh, at a cheaper cost. And then mm-hmm. I kind of regret it sometimes. I don't, I'm like, why, why didn't I just, why didn't I just buy what I wanted? Um, and so we want people when we buy our speakers to not experience that, you know, we want people when they buy, uh, when they go from their Logitech speakers up to a Canto U2, um, you know, we, we don't want them to feel like they're underwhelmed in any way. Um, and a big part of making sure customers are really happy with their purchase is making sure that they, they think about speaker stands as, like I said, an integral part of the process, because, um, you know, you guys probably know speaker position placement, all that plays a huge effect on how you perceive a, a speaker and how it sounds. So of course, buying speaker stands from Canto is going to benefit us, but as a whole, the reason why, you know, I'm, I'm really passionate. I'm talking about speaker stands is we just want to make sure that you get a speaker. You're, you're wowed by it. You're floored by it. There's nothing about the buying experience that, that makes you feel underwhelmed. So um, hopefully this talk, the seminar will kind of, you know, if you're a little bit on the fence about, you know, if speaker stands really make a difference, hopefully this seminar will, will kind of uh, solidify your, um, We'll solidify that speaker sounds are, are pretty important um, in that purchase to get that wow effect, to get everything and extract all the performance you can uh, out of your speakers. Um, I mean, I'm, you know, we're all, we're all audio enthusiasts here. We, we understand why speaker sounds <clears throat> exist. Um, but for all the people that are not aware of it, that's, you know, what I'll cover today. Um, so as, as like my last uh, seminar about uh, powered speakers, there's a lot of stuff I'm going to cover that audio enthusiasts know, um, but for people who are, uh, you know, just kind of learning, uh, hopefully this will be pretty uh, educational for you. And that's, you know, we're Canto. That's where we. That's where we play in the market, right? We're not making, um, you know, three thousand, five thousand dollar, you know, products. We're making speakers that people are just getting into audio. Um, we're making speakers like that. So we're making seminars specifically for those people. Would you mind if I just, instead of getting your stands, if if somebody just bought like five or six pairs of tux and just use those and stack them on top of one another? Yeah. So if you're making a line array of tux, um, <laughs> that the tux line array can just be your speaker stands. It, it nice. gets you the same height that you need. I like it. So yeah, that's pretty, wow. Holy crap. You know, we have access to literally doing that here at the office and I've never done that before. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be a good Instagram that's photo for sure. New, that's yeah. a new yeah. video yeah. post. Yeah, for the for the gram. All right. It's just because Jeff awesome. says here he put his bookshelves on top of towers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. I didn't even. I haven't even been looking at the chat, man. I'm sorry. I've been like just You're looking good. at the camera and, and definitely talking some. And, there's right. a couple of comments that come in. Um, Mark asked a question. He said, "How do you keep bigger bookshelf speakers on the small stands? Because I don't see many with a big top plate." Oh. Yeah. Um. Well. You know, we'll we'll cover this a little bit later, but um, you know, all Blue of pack. our speaker stands, we got we got pretty beefy plates, in addition to some plates that are you know a little bit a little bit smaller. Cool. Um. So you know, uh, you know, making sure that your speaker stands have uh, the correct size plate is is obviously important. Um. <laughs> and making sure that you get a speaker that actually accommodates your speaker is important too. And yeah, uh, I. It's always weird to me when I see competitors and they literally just have like one option for like a top plate. There's a few companies that do like multiple top plates, mm-hmm. but for the most part, it's just one size. And it's like, dude, how many speakers come in all shapes and forms? Like, anyways, I'm not going to complain too much about the industry as a whole. I'm gonna <laughs> talk about, talk about positive things. I'm going to be positive. That's right. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna bring a, we're gonna bring it way back and talk about what sound is. I'm not trying to pad this seminar. I'm just I, <laughs> but I'm literally worry, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm literally gonna talk about what what sound is uh, right. in this next part so that it really reinforces for people who are like not really sure why they need speaker sounds. Cool. It'll reinforce why they actually need it. I'm gonna take it back all the way to the law of conservation of energy. Straight up, I'm going way back there. Oh, so get your high school physics on. <clears throat> that's been a there long time ago buckle up buckle up guys all right so i want you not just not just you as in uh you know your speakers the three people here that are listening to me chana oh. and michael and <laughs> chana wasn't Everyone paying attention listening right as now. usual <laughs> i want i want y'all to see uh see matter 
in the way that the universe sees it, not humans. And what I mean by that is like, I got a webcam in front of me right now and I, I'm sitting right here. This gap that's between me and the webcam, that's, that's not really a gap. That's filled with air. That's mass. There is mass basically across the whole universe. There's no such thing as like, you know, empty space. Let's do a valedictorian. Um, yeah, buddy, let's do it. <laughs> so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do something really wild right now. I just flicked I just flicked the desk. So what did I actually do on a physics level? Um, I added like an impulse of energy into the desk. Uh, and what happened? That energy wasn't lost. Uh, it was transferred into the desk. So the molecules in the desk they're you know receiving energy and they slightly compress, they retract, they compress, they vibrate. Everything is springy essentially matter is springy like if you think about like an atom or a molecule it's like it's mostly like free space it's just electrons like just you know trying to separate themselves um so when you flick a desk my my mechanical energy is being turned to something else uh the net energy in the universe remains constant um but you know remember like there's no gap in energy or, or sorry in mass it's like when i flick that desk um there's no empty space beside the desk there's air beside that desk there's molecules so when you hit that desk um the molecules around the desk they'll, they'll move they'll vibrate around it as well uh, those air molecules they bump into other air molecules and they travel outward spherically um and the desk has a natural resonance like resonance uh to make it really easy it's you know it's it's like springiness everything is has a certain amount of springiness, how much it's going to move. Uh, and it's naturally going to have a little bit of, of dampening. Like it'll eventually it'll stop. Um, if you put some energy into some metal, like if you flick some, some metal, I'm flicking some metal right now. Can you hear it? You like flicking things. It's all good. I love it. Yeah. Just walk around, flick somebody's nose, no resonance there. We're good. Yeah. So if you flick metal, it's going to, it's going to resonate. It's going to move at a different rate than say wood. Um, it's going to resonate longer. It's less damped. Um, so when something vibrates, it has, uh, you know, a rate associated with it. We call that Hertz. When you flick something and it vibrates slightly, uh, moves back and forth a certain amount of times per second. That's Hertz. Um, so flick this desk, it moves energy this way, and then it pulls back and moves energy this way. And it's pulling and pushing air molecules back and forth. That is how sound is happening. When you flick something, it is using that energy to just excite the molecules around it, and then it goes outward. And mm -hmm. I'm not going to get into how your ear hears it, but your ear hears mm -hmm. those vibrations, um, that energy movement of you know the, the springiness and, and compressing of an object transferring into the air. Um, I'm going to look at the chat now because I'm going to do some demonstrations afterwards. I got a, I got a slinky here. Hey, slinky. Yeah, man. You like slinkies? I like slinkies. What is, you want to throw I some always, up on the, on the screen for me? I always used to break them, though. They'd always bend. And... <laughs> Flick anything hard enough, it does hurts. Oh! <laughs> God. Such a dad joke. I love it. <laughs> Yo, have you busted that out anytime else in the whole seminar, or was that the first time you've done that? I think the first, first time I did the trombone sound. I did the applause one. You did a trombone but, uh, sound for me. Yeah. I'm actually kind of that's that's rad, man. I really appreciate it. <laughs> 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 All right. Okay, let's talk about let's talk about this slinky here. Um, okay, so like everybody knows, like if you're talking about uh sound, everyone uses the analogy of like ocean waves. You know, sound mm -hmm. is is waves, it's vibrating, it's 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 back and forth. I like to use a slinky. I think it's a much better visual um to understand to understand sound. Okay, so we've all talked about what happens with air. You you know make energy and it vibrates and all that jazz. Um, what happens when that air hits a boundary? Bounces back. That's right. So if you make a little impulse, that energy is coming right back. It's hitting this left hand here. I guess you're right. Yep. And it's coming right back. That's that's happening when sound hits a wall. That's the exact same thing that's happening uh, in your room, in your house, wherever you are all the time, things are being reflected. So in your home, you probably have some drywall. That is very reflective. Um, it's absorbing, you know, a little bit, a tiny bit, um, but it's reflecting most of that sound back. 
And that's a problem. Um, and the problem is, well, if you have an incoming wave and it hits another reflective waves, they interfere with each other. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to throw away the slinky for, for this. I'm going to, I'm going to pull up a really dry, boring YouTube video for a second. Uh, and I think it like describes um, this reflection and this, uh, what happens in your room, your room pretty well. I'm going to see if I can do a, uh, I'm going to see if I can share my screen. Yeah, here. bring it up. Yeah, no worries. Okay, I'm going to share. I'm going to share our screen. We're going to see the behind the scenes here. All right. All right. Can you guys see my screen? Can yep. you see a YouTube video? Yep. You're good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> here we go. All right. So we're seeing a wave being created. And we're going to see what happens when this wave hits a boundary. Does the opposite. Just goes right back, man. Mm -hmm. Now, what's cool about this video is it shows what happens when two waves interact with each other. Oh, so nice. This. Yes. I'm going to guess. We're going to get a peek. You're going to see what happens here. This is some real Let's, let's see if we get a peek. Whoa! <laughs> Told you. Oh, a peak oh. and a valley. <clears throat> okay, they go back and forth. Smash. Hmm. I think they might show what happens when you uh when you do opposite waves too. Yeah, two opposite one out. Oh yeah. How are they gonna do that? I hope this is enter I hope this is entertaining you guys. Yeah, so it's like Check on the opposite out. side of it. What? <laughs> Look at that. That was so cool. Okay, so check what happens right, right in the middle. here. Boom. Boom. Bang. Flattens out. You get no sound. Cancel. It's like a right. bass note that's gone. Yeah, exactly. Check it out. No. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen. <laughs> that's cool. I like it. I love that. I Very love visual. that video. It's yeah, so I'm a visual cool. person, man. I'm a visual yeah. person. I can so, understand that. Yeah. So really, like um, that, what you just saw, <clears throat> that is happening with sound waves in your room. There's mm. certain places in your room where sound are interfering with each other constructively, and you're getting a peak. Mm -hmm. And there's places where it's it's uh, destructively interfering, and you get a canceled out wave. Um, so you pretty much have this happening in your room all the time and the real kicker the thing that's really horrible about this situation is that it doesn't happen on the whole volume of your audio it happens at certain frequencies right. so as michael was just saying you could be sitting on your couch and hearing like a 50 hertz tone and it could be like really overwhelmingly loud and then like 80 hertz is super super quiet because those waves are interacting in your room constructively and destructively and you are just you cannot escape the fact that your room <laughs> plays such a yeah. crazy significant role on how your speakers sound like you can have a ruler flat speakers you can have like the most monitor of the monitors and you will still have messed up areas in your house where things just are super loud and things are super quiet and it's not the volume overall it's it's like individual different frequencies and I think this kind of also plays a role in some reviews. You can't trust reviews a lot too. Um, I mean, you can, I mean, I'm not We're out of a job that. guys. I'm sorry guys, but I mean like, <laughs> you know, Joe, Joe, Joe tested tuck and he raved about the base and then other reviewers tried tuck and says it's thin through the base. Like how does they're that wrong. Mm -hmm. they're wrong? They're wrong. They're wrong. We it's already crazy. know like, this. They're totally wrong. Yeah. So it, it's, it's <laughs> like your speakers are playing tons of different frequencies and those waves are interacting all the time and it gets super complicated and complex with certain hot spots uh, in your house where there's dips uh, or there's peaks. Um, you know, you could have some really good vocal presence near your sofa uh, and then, you know, uh, by the fish tank, you, you know, kicks sound really thin and then it sounds kind of harsh when you're using your bow flex. Like, um, it, yeah, you just cannot escape your room and how it affects sound. Um, and you can actually, you can like test this really easily. If you guys just like, if you like throw a one killer signal 
uh, on your speakers and you just move your ears back and forth like this, like you'll hear that one kilohertz tone, like getting louder and quieter. Um, like no matter how good your room is, you'll hear it. Um, so that is the reason that I described sound and what it is and what happens and stuff like that, because you're always going to have areas in your house that are, are problematic. Um, your job when you buy new speakers is to find a position for those speakers where, where you're sitting, it's not as detrimental to sound quality. You literally, you owe it to yourself if you buy some new speakers to move your speakers around your home to find an area that where you're sitting is, is the least problematic. You're always going to have some issues but you want to find those spaces. And I guarantee it, your bookshelf speakers on top of your cabinet, is those aren't the right place for your speakers. Like, it's going to be a one in a million chance that, you know, you throw your speakers on top of a piece of furniture and that's where your speakers need to be. Um, so that's why you need speaker stands. It's not just for aligning the tweeter with your ear. It's not just for making a perfect triangle. It's not just for that. It's literally about having a piece of dedicated furniture that you can move around your house so that you can find the place where your speakers sound the best and you have the least messed up frequency response <laughs> where you're sitting. You can buy high-end equipment and DSP the crap out of your speakers, whatever. If you don't have that though, like you, you really need to find where your speakers sound good in your house. And speaker stands are the perfect thing. They're literally, that's what they're designed for. They are designed to find the perfect spot in your home. Um, so just that, hopefully, if, if you kind of never really thought that deep into uh, why you need it, hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. Um, I hope that presentation wasn't super dry or boring. I hope it was it was that's entertaining dope. enough to, to people. Yes, thank you. Appreciate it. Love the visuals. Don has a question here. He says, how do you determine to use absorption or diffusers? Oops. That's, that that's, up. that's so out of my scope. I'm sorry. <laughs> Me too. I like, I cannot, I can't answer you about that. Honestly, like you, you know, the worst room is like a square room. Cause you have like, you know, standing waves in, you know, uh, like, you know, you have standing waves everywhere. Like waves are interfering and bouncing with each other. So, I mean, like the more diffusion you have in your room, um, it's better up into a point where your room sounds completely dead. <laughs> so like I was listening to the OSD presentation and he mentioned something, a statistic like 84% of the sound you hear is reflected sound. Like 16% of what you hear is coming directly from your speakers. The rest is, mm -hmm. is your room. Um, and that's just wild to think about that. Like yeah. your room affects your room affects your listening experience so much. Um, Okay, so I like I also mentioned like lining up your tweeter height. Um, another thing that I think the the OSD presentation uh, was mentioning was if you have a really good off axis frequency response, um, you don't need to um, you don't need to line things up like really really well. Um, but sadly, we make a product uh, that has an AMT tweeter, <laughs> and the vertical dispersion on an AMT tweeter is just not that good. Like it's, uh, it's unfortunately you got really good. Um, you got really good, uh, with dispersion, like horizontally, but mm -hmm. vertically you don't. So <clears throat> again, speaker stands will get the tweeters lined up with your ear. They'll, they'll get it so that everything sounds on axis and properly. Mm -hmm. And even if your speakers do measure really good off axis, like, you know, you want to try to be on axis cause it's going to sound the best. Um, uh, and then, of course, speaker stands improve stereo image. You know, if you got a, a small desk that you're working at and you put a speaker, you know, here and, and here and it's, you know, just they're like barely separated from your ears. You know, you're not going to get a really big sound stage. Things are you're not going to get that 3D sound um, that that two channel systems can give you. All oh, right. It's kind of interesting. It says, why does why do most metal stands why don't they have any absorption like built into them? I guess. I if mean, they, if they, they resonate, they, they, sh then... they should. Um, yeah, they should. I mean, I think a lot of manufacturers of speaker stands, like leave it to the customer to figure things out um, to make I'm, sure things. I are... think a lot of like your average consumer, I don't know if they even know to fill them with sand or some no, dampening don't. material. 
you know, just the regular average consumer that just says, okay, I need speaker stands because I don't want to put these on the floor and my mm-hmm. TV's as wide as my cabinet. So I got to put them on something. So then yeah. they buy them and, and they don't know to even do that. No. And, you know, let's, let's talk about resonance and damping for a sec. Cause like, you know, I had like, I was thinking as I was writing the seminar, I had like a thought experiment of like, what, what is the best speaker stand? And like, I concluded that it was, it was like cinder blocks, super glued to your speakers floating in space. Like that <laughs> that's is, pretty dope. you know, <laughs> that, that's literally like that. That's where it's at. Right. Like, okay. So we were like just talking a little bit about like, when I was talking about uh, audio theory, we were talking about like natural resonance. Um, like this slinky, this has natural resonance. No matter how much amplitude I put into this thing, it's still going to go up and down and like travel that many hertz, that many times per second. Um, everything has a natural resonance. Um, so the reason, you know, Michael is saying to add sand to your, to your speaker sands is because um, you'll be able to reduce your natural frequency your re- national resonance of your system by adding mass um natural resonance is is literally a mathematical function it's like stiffness versus mass those are the two um those are the two values in that calculation so if you can add mass to your system you will reduce the natural resonance you can reduce it to a point in which it's not audible <clears throat> like or it's not uh locatable um you know we all talk about 80 hertz as this you know like you know, this point in which you can't really hear it. If you have, uh, if your speakers are like resonating and your stands resonating mm-hmm. at, you know, 150 Hertz, like you can locate that and you can hear it. But if you add a bunch of mass, it'll lower your national resonance and uh, you'll, you'll get it maybe down to like, you know, 40 Hertz. And at that point you can't really locate where it's coming from um, or it's below, you know, any frequency that your audio system can even make. If you just got a, you know, pair of, uh, bookshelf speakers not a ton can go down to 40 hertz um so yeah that's why it's important to have mass like it's not just about like being sturdy or something it's literally you know physically doing something um to the audio um so that's 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 uh that's resonance um and or then the tiger says we... speak or speak hanging from the ceiling by cords or ropes like a plant yeah, straight up. If you want to macrame your speakers, like that as that, that'll like that'll give you a legit decent experience, which is really funny to think about. But um, but yeah, you you want to you want to increase mass to reduce that resonance. But what you don't want is you want to you don't want to transfer any energy into the ground. So speaker sands have this like weird duality where it's like they're sitting on the ground, but you don't want them to transfer any energy into into the ground. Um, so you want them to be coupled. You want the speaker sand to be coupled with the speaker, and you want the speaker sand to be decoupled with the floor. Um, you know, you can't really you can't really have that um, just because you do need to physically put the speaker stand on your floor. But there are ways to to decouple. Um, there's ways to decouple through the use of, um, you know, instead of having the whole base on your floor, you have little points, like, you know, you got little carpet spikes, uh, with a little disc that, you know, will only transfer energy in four little points rather than the whole platform. Um, you also, uh, have the ability to, you can add, you know, like, you know, foam or, or, or like rubber to absorb. Um, so yeah, ideal speaker stand perfectly coupled. Uh, to the speaker, but perfectly uncoupled with the floor and really heavy to reduce resonance. Um, so if you can hit all those notes, if you can have speaker sends that can that can do all that, they're heavy, they're really attached well to the speaker um, and they'll decouple it from the floor and they're in the right spot. Boom, you've avoided that situation where you buy new speakers and you're not impressed with them. That's that's all I'm trying to get at here. Okay. Really, it's just, you know, speaker stands are just so important. Now, does that, like, you put it on the speaker stand to couple it with the speaker and decouple it from the floor, does that also work for lava lamps? So, lava lamps is a little bit different in that, if you couple it with the floor, it's not at the proper eye level to enjoy it. So that's why mine is on a speaker stand right now. 
because it brings it to the point in which <laughs> your natural human enjoyment increases. Uh, and we can and see I it wish, for the video. Yeah, I wish I, I wish Optimal I got here enjoyment, earlier. Huh? Yeah, I wish I, I wish that I uh, came here earlier to turn it on so that it would be, you know, chooch and full flesh. Lava still, aling, lava aling. Still just, yeah, it's still just kind of <laughs> like weird. It's like a solid shit. mass. Yeah. Neil Swagger says that lava lamp is either super big or the speakers are super small. <laughs> That's a, it's a huge ass lava lamp. It's it's literally like you know here's my hand I, I'm touching it right now. It's, That's funny. Uh, it's a Derek says, what if your ground is cement? Because you're okay, talking about so if your ground right? so if your ground is cement, you are in a very good position because your floor is not gonna vibrate. <laughs> like, <laughs> Concrete is not going to vibrate. It has so much mass. The natural resonance of that is so low. It's like whale call. Like, you know, it's like, it's, it's just, that's why, that's why carpet spikes are included uh, with, with speaker stands. It's, it's not for, it's really weird to, to think about this, but it's not floor. It's not for sub floors that are made out of wood because your wood is literally right. going to vibrate. If you put your carpet spikes down through your carpet into wood your wood's still going to kind of vibrate. It's not the it's not the greatest situation. Where carpet spikes really shine is carpet on top of concrete floor cuz then you will get your speaker stand solidly sitting on something so they don't move around, um but it's it's not going to vibrate if that makes sense. Yeah. Um so yeah, cement like literally it's the the best situation for for uh for, you know, decoupling is you could literally have the speaker stand on it and you won't have any weird resonance or issues. It's kind of an interesting concept. True Voice of Reason says putting dynamat, you know, between the speaker stand oh, and the yeah. floor. Yeah. So yeah. we used to use that in the car audio days. Mm hmm. Yeah. I haven't heard the word dynamat. Neil Swagger actually time. uses cinder blocks, 70 yes. pounds each for his rear speakers. That's right. Do you put do you put the cinder block on top or you, you like squish them? It, right? You be... put it on top to, to couple them using gravity to couple them or I'm not sure. Um, let's talk about our speaker stands. I've been talking about, I mean, playing with slinkies, slinkies and, and, you know, and lava lamps. And this, what is this? The you're 70s? Not, you're, you're not making any oh. money talking about slinkies. No, yeah, come on. Yeah. We want to let people it's know how, how, awesome, how awesome your, uh, speaker stands are. Yeah. Let's talk about our speaker stands. Let's do it, man. All right. Sounds good. I'm going to do, I'm going to do one of the, the old reveals here. Oh, buddy. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> this year. <laughs> Just shook the whole desk. That thing is heavy. Yeah, I noticed that. It's hella, it's hella heavy. Okay, so this is this is the this is the floor sounding speaker sound. This is right here the SP26. We have an SP32, 26 and 32 inches respectively. Very um, very good naming conventions we've used. Um, okay, so this guy here is. Let's talk about some of the features that make this stand really rad. So um, this base is is heavy this is this is like a cover for the base but the actual base itself oh, big I'll steel plate yeah oh, this yeah. is a this is this is a thick boy this is a really big heavy steel plate um you know so we we talked about phil um we we don't even mention phil actually with our speaker sounds because we in my opinion have some of the heaviest bases like in the industry this thing is this thing is heavy as heck um, so yes, go ahead, fill them with sand if you want, but if you don't, you are still going to get, um, you're still going to add a ton of mass to your, to your speaker. Um, we have at the very top here, you can see, hopefully we got a really large cutout here. Um, mm -hmm. for the for cables for cable management. Um, we make powered speakers, so we got to make this cable management big enough to put a power cable through. So sure. super easy to set up. Like it's, um, that opening is, is way bigger than a lot of the, uh, a lot of the competition out there as well. So speaking of that though, it would probably be difficult to fill your stands with sand or lead shot because of that. Um, it's not too difficult. If you look on the bottom here, so we have, we have this whole, um, that the, the speaker cables can, can come through. So it's not mm -hmm. sealed, but you can use the speaker. Um, we like ship all of our speaker stands with, um, like the poles, they come with plastic bags. Mm -hmm. If you want, you can use that plastic bag. It's pretty sturdy. So you can drop that inside of the, the base and, and you can okay. do that as well. So it doesn't have like a separate compartment for cable management, right. but if you want to fill it, you can definitely do it with that. that bag. Okay. And it's already um, pre-assembled. It looks like, like there's no assembly. So there's two the most components part? that you need to assemble. So okay. the base, 
the base has two gotcha. uh, two screws, screws. Allen keys or Allen screws. Mm -hmm. So that'll connect the column to the base. Cool. And then up top, this is this is a trick. This is like <laughs> this is really cool. So um, if you if you have the speaker stands, if you know about them, um, you'll know we actually have a really unique system of of mounting. Um, so it's actually that top plate is not measured or sorry, it's not it's not latched down from the top. Um, it's it's from the it's from the, the side of the column essentially. Um, so this slides out. It's That's on kind of like a it's on a it's on a carriage. Uh, and the reason we do that is because if you just put a bolt through the top, then that wouldn't give you the cool ability to have this hole in the middle, which you use to mount Canto speakers to. Mm, nice. Super That's cool. That's a trick. That is a trick feature that's super underrated when we talk about coupling we're literally coupling our speakers to our speaker stands mm -hmm. so that mass of your speaker stand is now part of your speaker so you're not just having a speaker that's sitting on top of speaker stand that whole speaker stand and that speaker is together as one it's coupled and that mass is now all together as one unit and it lowers that resonant frequency to the point where you pretty much don't have any sort of issues with vibration or anything like that. That is a huge thing that people I think overlook is like the coupling of the speaker uh, to the speaker stand. Um, you can put a bunch of weight on top of it to press it together, or you can do what we've done. And we just made all of our speakers have little holes at the bottom and it'll attach to this. We're going to do this live. We're going to do a, a live uh, a live unboxing. Here. We're going to do a live speaker attachment here. And I like how you already have some kind of pad in between there already, right? Oh, yeah. Let's start. Sorry. Yeah. All of our speaker stands, they, they have closed cell phone at the top nice. to just make sure that you're not going to have any sort of weird vibration or resonance. So we already have that up top there. Um, so, yeah, I mean... I guess I take it for granted, but yeah, other speaker manufacturers, they don't include they don't. any sort of, uh, any sort of foam, but we got some nice foam. It's got a Canto embossed logo. So we have a logo that's like, it's really, um, it's really like sly. It's like, a you know, we don't want to like, you know, slap the Canto brand on, on everything and make it, yeah, it's nice and subtle. So I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to take this here. All right. So that, that is attached. Cool. That's attached right there. That's really That's dope. it. And um, I don't know if you saw, but there is another cool feature of these speaker stands. Uh, they actually have the ability to tow in and tow out. So okay. we have... Um, nice. This is hard to see on, on camera yeah. here. But yeah, we can see this it. Little, this little carriage here, um, it's adjustable. So I'm going to pop it all the way into its most um, angled direction. So we got a little bit of swivel uh, going on our speaker stand. Um, you can just lock it down. And now when I put this on the speaker stand, and you won't see this kind of be going to be off camera a little bit here. I apologize. So I'm going to screw the, the front of it here. So right now, if you can't see me, I'm literally just attaching the top plates to the column. So here we are. Boom. Do that with your speaker stands at home, guys. Yeah. And then maybe, maybe not. It. I have I have you can see probably the, the base is facing straight. But if I drop it down a little bit, the speaker is actually facing uh, speakers facing that way. So we have a little bit of angle, a little bit of tone included in our speakers. Thing. Cool. You know what's cool about that is if you're one of those people who needs it perfect, you know, have you ever had it like you have it perfect, and then you have to move it for whatever reason? How hard is it to get back into that exact position? Whereas with these, yeah. like, you can always have the stands facing forward, right? So as long as they're facing forward, and you have that toe in set you're good that's all good um here's something that comes from our tv mount world um so all of our tv mounts come with a really nice bolt box let me show you this bolt box dang look at that so this bolt box 
has all your hardware and it's just like labeled really nicely a b c d that also is not going anywhere yeah. everything is like nicely attached so it's really organized it's really high end really really um really well thought out and this is this is the stuff from the black this is the stuff from the black speaker stands um you can see the the spike here is black if mm -hmm. you get the uh the white speaker stand comes with silver nice. silver hardware so we color match our hardware too just another little uh small thing that we do that's pretty mm, cool nice little detail there nice little attention to detail that we have there all right <laughs> so that was the floor floor standing speaker stand let's talk about the desktop speaker stands because we make really dope speaker stands for Ooh. desktop as well so i got over here we have the sp9 so literally the exact same tube and extrusion same sort of carriage um sliding style uh base at the top so just unscrew this guy and i'll show you what that looks like again that actually puts it almost ear level that's pretty cool yeah so this guy here the sp9 uh comes with two top plates so it comes with this little guy which is for you know the u2 like our, our smallest speaker mm -hmm. and then you also get this size with it as well so you get uh two different sizes of top plate with the sp9 with the sp26 32 pl um all of our standing riser style uh speaker stands come with two top plates um so that you can make them work with um, cool. for sp9 your smaller medium sized speakers and for the sp6 uh, you can see the height difference between there. SP6 comes with a really big fat plate and the medium size plate. Um, so that that's for your medium to large size speakers. Um, so a little bit counterintuitive. Larger speakers, they don't need as much height to get your tweeter at ear level. So it's a little bit shorter. Nice. Uh, and of course, the bases are, are closed cell foam on these as well. So closed cell foam on the top and the bottom, which is a really uh, nice feature. And same thing. It's got the same toe-in capabilities as the the full-size speaker stands, uh, the floor-standing speaker stands. Um, I think that probably covers it for these guys. They're so similar to the other ones. Um, you know, they got that really big, beefy cable management that I was talking about that can fit a power cable just like the full-size, mm -hmm. the full-standing speaker or the the floor-standing speaker stands. Um, and then we'll talk about the angled speaker stand. So. This is the SP stuff. We're going to talk about the the S stuff. So, Jason, S2. on the are you going to get to the pricing a little bit later, or would now um, segue a good time? Or I mean, you tell if me. We want to talk. If we want to talk about pricing. We can even just even just they're, roughly. They're asking about yeah. it, so yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, so they're ready to yeah. buy, man. Come on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> the credit so, cards ready. <laughs> yeah. So SP SP thirty two, uh, the largest of the floor standing speaker stands, I believe, is one hundred and forty dollars map everyday price. You want to pull uh, those up, Chana? Yeah, I'll pull them up. Are they just on your website? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just pull You up know, another stuff. thing that I don't I don't know if you mentioned this. I was kind of over here uh, managing the, the chat, trying to bring everything up. But um, uh, when, when you bolt on that stand, the speaker to the stand, it acts as one unit, right? So when you yeah. go to move thing, it feels like one just solid unit. Cohesive, yeah. Yeah, almost, almost like you're moving a tower, right? Yeah. Yeah, and and if you have kids, you're not worried about them knocking over yeah. the speaker because it's bolted mm -hmm. on. They're gonna have to knock over that entire thing, which is pretty hard considering how heavy it is. A lot harder, yeah. Yeah, it yeah. feels like just one. It's nicely balanced, basically. And that's something that like not many manufacturers can you know can tout about you know safety of their speaker stands. In fact, most speaker stands I think are a liability. <laughs> you know, you have your you have your center of gravity of your your system a lot higher up on a speaker stand. Um, but yeah, when you can just pff, cinch them together and make one cohesive unit, mm -hmm. um, man, it's like really confidence inspiring. So I like the these, light ones; uh, those look cool. Yeah, are th these prices are for a pair, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, one forty for um, for SP thirty two, one thirty for uh, SP twenty six. So those are the 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 floor standing speaker stands. What is that, uh, and then we're looking at the. <laughs> you, you sit on that as a chair or what? <laughs> no, it's oh. for your headphones, Mike. <laughs> yeah. I'm just looking. I go, okay, yeah, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. You know, so we're we're not we're not talking about our headphone stands, but I mean, like I said, we 
you know, we make all sorts of metal products, you know, as, as a TV mount company, um, you know, we got all of our accessories on lock. We do really cool metal products. Um, so yes, we have headphone stands, but you're looking nice. right now at the SP series, SP 26, SP 32, uh, cool. 130, 140, and they come in white or black. Um, so you can kind of match your system. They got carpet spikes and they got uh, rubber feet. So it'll, you know, obviously for whatever flooring you got, it'll work for it. There's a cool little shot right there showing the power, you know, cable management yeah. underneath. Nice, nice cutout on the, on the bottom of the, uh, of the base to, to run the, the cable management through. Nice. So we're going to use man deal here. What's that? Any high Don's fight. looking for a youth man deal. He's like, any high price of a deal? And maybe in your if you're in the VIP chat, you can ask him there. There you go. Yeah. Um, and then the SP desktop speaker stands. You're looking at uh, for the nine inch version. You're looking for the SP nine. You're looking at seventy dollars. And then we're I think ninety. I think it's eighty nine ninety nine for the SP six <laughs> HD. Um, so so ninety dollars and um, nine dollars and, and and seventy dollars for sp6 hd and sp9 which are these guys here and i'll just throw the the plates on them just you know for for the camera so you can kind of see how they look there jason one of the comments popping up is like how um i guess what's the diameter roughly on the the tube we're talking like three inches maybe two and yeah half? yeah so yeah so it's about three inches by about one and a half inches okay. for, for the tube so you can see the, the cross section cool of the uh of the tube let's make you bigger here hang on a second Sure. There you go. Hi-Fi yeah. Haven says he's going to pick up a pair of the 26s. <laughs> I'm still thinking about that saddle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't know what it was. All, but all I, don't, the, I, don't uh, I don't have fancy. All the, all the top plates for the um, for the desktop stands work with the, uh, like, they're all interchangeable. Like, you know, they are essentially the same product. Cool. It's just, you know, one tube is shorter than, than the other one. This sure. is the only unique part. This is the, this is the, the small, the super small little guy that goes on the SP nine. Uh, you can't get that on the SP 26 or the SP 32. That's for, that's for very small little dainty speakers. And a little cool feature about that too, is like, if you have, the ability to uh, secure your speaker onto your speaker stand, the size of the plate doesn't matter as much. So True. Um, you could even throw like a big speaker on this, you know, or tuck on this as well. Mm -hmm. You know, it won't, we don't really recommend it, but if you want like a super like clean look where you literally cannot see like what it's sitting on. It's like floating. Yeah. yeah. That's, this looks dope on it too. I like it. Yeah. Thank you. And you see the screen, uh, Jason? I can see the screen right can now. You, you can see all of us here. Uh -huh. Like when we pull. Let's see. I think I have some photos from. From when I had these, mm -hmm. I'm just I had to take photos because this thing was so cool. The box, like you're showing. Yeah. And yeah. There it is. Whoa! What's this? Oh yeah. How? It comes with, with both of those. And there's the, there's the bottom of the, U six I believe. And then this is how it swivels. A little swivel yeah. action. Gotcha. Yeah. Word up. So, yeah, I mean, super well thought out. Really good prices. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I love them. Like, they're really, they're really great. It's, there's, you know, I'm, I'm proud of a lot of the things that we, that we make at Canto, but like the speaker stands, I think are such a standout for me just because of the integration too with our products. Like there's not that many manufacturers that are putting the, the time and effort into making sure their products are that cohesive together. Mm -hmm. um, Did you just talk... say that they were a standout? <laughs> um, one of the questions and... from Don was how can you mount speakers that are not Canto? You gotta make a hole. Huh? Unfortunately, you just gotta throw the speakers on top and or, hope they stay there. Um, hope that your kids don't push them over. Um, I mean, tag. they'll. <laughs> yeah, you can velcro <laughs> them if you want to do that. You can, you know, put a super glue there. works. I hear. Yeah, do you guys make you can, uh, custom top plates. Is uh, what Mark is asking. We don't make custom top plates. We make the two sizes that come with the. Um, I think the the sizes I believe are. For this guy here, it's I think 4.3 by 7.1 inches, and the larger top plate is seven by seven. It's a square. So those are the two Pretty that come plate. with all the the SP2632. See, everybody knows Blue Tack. Blue, Blue Tack is the stuff, dude. 
Look at that. Hi-Fi Haven's already ready to buy. Yep. Pair of each model. All right. So we're not done quite yet. All right. We got the S2. So I was, I was wondering, here, should I put it up on the website? Yeah, go for it. I was man. looking at these. I don't even know the prices of the forty four ninety nine. Oh, I think these guys are twenty five. Oh, which one is that? The two? The S two. The S two. This is the smallest one. S two. Uh, twenty five bucks. Let YouTube, me get you up there, Chana. There you go. There you go. And then we have the S four, which is a little bit larger. It's for the. It's for the U four. This one here is the Ooh, colors. Color. Yeah. So unfortunately, I I believe that we're going going just black and white so i think this is a legacy skew hmm. if these oh, colors no. are still in the market, if these if these uh metal colors are still in the market if you can find them and you want them pick them up now yeah uh, we're just going to black and white for all of our speaker sounds so this is kind of legacy but uh same same hole that you're seeing um That's cool yeah this works with the u4 u4 speaker it's got that beveled beveled hole down there at the bottom so you can throw our speakers on there and becomes a nice cohesive unit closed cell foam on the top and the bottom and I really like just the cantilever design of these things because they actually do have a little bit of, they will absorb a little bit of vibration just due to their inherent design. Um, yeah, really clean design as well. Uh, the industrial designer who made these, shout out Stu. Um, just gorgeous, really beautiful. Um, I love these guys. And then the biggest guy, the S6, live on box. Live on box for this one. Let me just show this one real, real quick. This was uh, my wife. My wife's desk set up. Uh, let's see, can you see that one? Mm -hmm. um, there you go. Look how sexy that, that is, dude. Is that copper with blue? Uh, yeah, it's like that greenish teal looking with. Uh, yeah, that's, that's the teal. That's the gloss teal. I didn't know you um, were on Canto's website as well, Joe. I know, right? It looks like an ad. I know. My favorite part of this Hi-Fi Summit is the fact that you guys already know about those things and you can sell it uh, like even better than me sometimes. So if I forget <laughs> something, you guys are like, don't forget it has this, Jason. I'm like, By the way, That's Jason, right. That's don't right. forget. It does have that. All right. Live All right, so this is the S6. This is, this is the biggest angled speaker sound we make. So we got S2, S4 for the U2 and S4, or sorry, U4 speaker. U4. Also U, U and U4 are like the exact same size. They're pretty much the same speaker. Uh, and then this guy here, the S6, is for the U6 and Tuck. So okay. very large. So you just get a little baggie. Just comes with the uh, the two screws and the uh, Allen key needed to secure the speakers to the stands. And then let's check these guys out here. <clears throat> these ones are big boys. They have a little embossed, embossed Canto logo. I don't know if you can see it, but very subtle mm -hmm. branding again. Mm -hmm. Um, super thick steel for, for like a little desktop for not, well, oh, it's yeah. not little, it's pretty big. Yeah, that's a big desktop <laughs> it's pretty, it's speaker. It's pretty heavy. It's pretty heavy. So let's throw, let's throw tuck on this guy as well. Um, so that Bring you can it. see what it's like. And you can see it has a little slot instead of just a hole. It's because the, uh, mounting location, the hole on tuck and U6 is a little bit different. Mm. Um, and it'll fit both. So we have a little slot there. All right. So let's get tuck on there. I can see Jason. He's about to start his own YouTube channel. He's going to do some unboxings and <laughs> some trainings. And... No doubt. He's going to have a channel that's going to be all, nothing but attaching speakers to stands. That's right, man. It's I'll, have, stand. I'll have a maximum. I'll get like four videos and then people will just be like, why, why did I even subscribe? It's going to be called the lava <laughs> experiment. Or yeah. or people will love it if you just like, if you just don't even like, or you talk real smooth. And then it's just like the sounds of the, you know, ASMR. Oh, no, dude, ASM, <laughs> ASMR, like just just right there when you're taking the uh, Allen key out of the bag. There, just get some of uh, those. Uh, there you go. <laughs> no, we know we need some of those Sonic Presence mics. There you go. <laughs> right. And, oh my gosh. All right, so we got Tuck attached. Simple as that. Super tuck easy. Attack. So we got that. If you act now. <laughs> So yeah, there you go. That's uh, yeah. that's on there. That is sturdy. It is, um, yeah. It's just one nice cohesive unit, and uh, man, it looks it looks great together. It performs really well. Um, oh, these are yeah, only, I don't know, I can't uh, say. sixty dollars, right? That's it. I believe so. Yeah. You know what underrated uh, benefit of of that is that you can actually put like a few things under there. If you have like little remotes oh, for stuff. Put your phone in there. Nice. Yeah. If, you know what I mean. 
Yeah, like here, we'll put some we'll put some speaker feet in there. Yeah, if you have limited desk space, like <laughs> every just... amount of. Well, yeah, I mean, I, hashtag I got, put your I junk. This I got phone in here. Junk, thumb drives, junk. speakers, this... headphones. This is uh, water, water bottle. bottle. <laughs> I'm here oh, for your entertainment. That's um, great. Yeah, I mean that kind of covers it. That's that's the whole lineup, like uh oh. riser speaker stands riser desktop uh angle desktop and then floor standing speaker stands um yeah hopefully you guys kind of get a good feature overview and understand the importance of of speaker stands you know i'm passionate about them uh because they're just such cool products they work so well with, with tanto speaker <laughs> I like it. You can put your weed in there. So oh wow! That's <laughs> what yeah, Mark that's... said. <laughs> we'll put a little. We'll put a little panel on the next speaker that we make. It just like a little hidden. You can just uh, take it out little... and you can, you can put anything you want in there. Hey, if you put it in the porthole, it'll just start blowing stuff everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, put your junk. Put your your junk under your tuck. That's the new slogan. Oh god! Put your junk <laughs> under your tuck. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, that's hang out. Amazing. Hang out for a bit. Um, I'm gonna give you a link in the private chat here. Sure. So, if you wouldn't mind, pop into the VIP area and just hang out with us. Yeah, yeah no worries. I got the Joe. private chat slot open on my uh, on my. Oh, computer you got here. you you already have it. I have uh no it's it's blank yeah, it's get... blank for me on my side so I'm gonna Maybe send I've... it here. Okay. Um, what uh what time are we starting uh, tomorrow, Joe? Do you know? Uh, I, I think we have tomorrow. it set for ten. Tomorrow is 10 a.m. No, no, no. I'm sorry. That is. Here we go. Yeah. 10 a.m. Pacific Standard. So we'll do. That's the uh, attendee system tours. So is that just the. That's just in the VIP. Yes. Yeah, so that's yeah. the VIP. So basically we don't have anything until 4 p.m. That's, okay. the re that's the recap. Very good. Very good. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Day four. Almost in the books. Quarter four 2020, the Hi Fi Summit. We have the after party coming up at 6 p.m. I will be playing my favorite house music. So I'll be playing for a couple of hours uh, this time because I got a whole lot of it, a whole lot of new stuff, a lot of cool stuff. And I'm going to mix it up, add my drum machine in there, get kind of crazy with it because. Dang. Well, and you got some of your music you're going to play too, right? I, yes, that's right. I uh, bounced Exclusive. out my track. Yes, my uh, new new song. I uh, will be playing that. Um, nice. I don't know when, but uh, I'll play it in there. Uh, and hopefully the uh, it's knock on wood. So make sure. Hopefully, you know, we don't. YouTube doesn't shut down the stream. Oh, it probably right. will. <laughs> but um, anyway, um, thank you so much, Jason, and of course uh, the good folks at Canto Audio for coming out again to the Hi Fi Summit. Um, as they said, we're doing an all VIP only tomorrow starting at 10 p.m. And we've got the wrap up at sorry, 10 a.m. And we got the wrap up at 4 p.m. on the main site. So uh, VIPs, we'll see you in a minute and uh, everybody else will see you in an hour. All right. Bye.